Hey everyone! Wow, what a morning! Uh, I don't even—I lost count. But we did a lot of great uh, interviews, great conversations this morning. A lot of it, as we've been doing all week, has been around security. I think we're going to continue talking a little bit about security with our next guest here. Let me introduce you, and if I mess up his name, he'll correct me. Amir Montazari. That's I right, Amir Montazari. Yes. Montazari. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's got that New York accent. But yeah. anyway, Amir, man, welcome. Welcome to Thank Tech Strunk TV. Thank you. So happy to be here. Yep. So, you know, I guess we'll start with the obvious question of what brings you here. Yeah, absolutely. So I co-founded OSTIF, the Open Source Technology Improvement Fund, which was designed to solve the classic problem in open source of how do we make open source more secure? How do we do it in a way that doesn't disrupt open source project maintainers and the great work that they do, and how do we do it in a way that's impactful? And so we started exploring this problem, and... For so when? when? When did you start? Sort of been over seven years ago now. Wow. Yeah, so it was about seven years ago. Um, some of the inspiration came from the CII, the Core Infrastructure Initiative, yep. that was also attempting to solve this problem as well. And um, it's a very big and complex problem, so it needs all the all the help it can get. A lot get. of hands. Yes, and so um, so since then um, we have honed in on a method for helping projects and the organizations that support those projects with auditing and improving security holistically, and we champion that audit process from start to finish. So a project can come to us and say, "We want this project audited." and we get it done. And what are you auditing it for? For security, for stability, viability? Correct, mostly for security and sustainability. So a lot of research suggests that a lot of those deep-seated problems, vulnerabilities, and bugs aren't on the surface level when you look at the code. They are deep into the code. So deeper auditing, more logic review. Um, so you're really doing code audit then? Correct. Not yes. not auditing how many maintainers there are. Or exactly. Sort of like yes. what Scorecard does. In exactly. Our last guest. This is really looking at the code and seeing how how safe is the code, how secure exactly. is the code. Exactly. Yes. And so part of this process that we've developed and the method that we've developed is finding the best suited uh, teams out there folks from all around the world, audit teams from all around the world, finding the best suited ones, the most specialized ones um, that can do this kind of work. Um, Love and it's it. It's resulted in, it's been very successful, thankfully. We've found over 40 critical or high vulnerability, risk vulnerabilities. Um, these are those deep-seated problems that, when exploited in the wild, can cause headlines, cause those kind of things you read about. Log for uh, case. Log stuff. for shell, right, heart log. bleed, all that good stuff. So we're going out and proactively finding these problems and fixing them, of course, because um, a great part of our method is not only finding these problems, but our auditors work with the, the maintainers to fix them as well. Love it. I have a few questions on that. But yeah. before we jump into that, I want to give our people at home, um, so it's O. Open Source Technology Improvement, Improvement Fund. Fund. Yes. Where do they go on the web? Ostiff.org. That's what we were wanting. Okay. Now, I hear the word fund, and I'm thinking, well, maybe there's fundraising involved here. Yes. So um, the fundraising typically comes from the organizations um, and foundations that are stewards of these open source projects or kind of the the supporters or maintainers of it. So they they pay you to do to perform this service. Correct, yes. And Got it. another uh, a really nice thing about our method too is that instead of just working with one or two audit teams, we're able to actually go to a large number of them and effectively have them bid against each other as well. So we're able to do it for almost a third of the cost that kind of more traditional audits in this space cost. That's great. Um, and by being that kind of that champion to, to manage this process, um, it makes the quality bar much higher as well of these reviews. Got it. So let me go back to what we were talking about before. I, I, I wanted to just give people a sense right away that yeah, they absolutely. want to go check this. You know, people, while they're listening, they'll go check the site out. Um, but, you know, we find a deep-seated vulnerability, defect, whatever you want to call it, come up with a, a way to fix it. 
So let's take sort of struts, uh, struts two as an example. Okay, so now we fixed it and we need to update to the new version in all the repositories out there where people download this, this open source code from. And not only do we need to update all those repositories, but we've got to somehow notify all of the people who have incorporated that code into their projects, into their applications. They're using it to, hey, we've got a problem here, you need to update this. Right? It's one thing when we're talking about a, an OS, right, and you can kind of you know, hit people like that, or a phone app that you can do, but how, how do you do it? So, that's a great question. <laughs> that's a really yeah, great that's a question. Very good question. Um, I would say pro the, what we do to help with that is we really focus on transparency. Yep. So once all of the work is done, fixes have been made, um, remedi they've been tested, we know that, that the fixes are, are in fact fixed, um, we put all of that into an audit report that is then published publicly to the fr for free for anyone to review. And um, we're also publishing those out onto the OpenSSF security reviews repo, which is a collection of these That's types great. of this yeah. type of work to really get the word out there. And I think the one of the biggest value adds that that provides is being able to show the open source community at large what was done, how we fixed it, so that they can take that back to their teams and um, and learn from them, serve as case studies, and really just raise the bar as a whole of open source security. I love it. So it sounds to me then, look, the mission of, of, of uh, your group is to hey, undertake this audit, uncover if there's any kind of, you know, vulnerability defects that we got to fix. Fix it, publish the fix, publish the background on it, and then we need the community, it sounds like, to get involved from that point on, and the users of, you know, the consumers of this stuff, right? You know, the old saying, you could lead the horse to water. Exactly. Right? But they need to go update and, and do their thing. Have you thought about maybe adding that aspect to the the charter of your mm -hmm. organization? Um. I'm. I don't think we have. No, uh, we, we've been so hyper focused on. Well, it's a big the, job. Yes, right? yes, yeah. and there's a lot of big jobs involved, unfortunately, in this whole thing. Indeed, yes. Um, but part of I think why we've been so successful is focusing on solving the problem the way. Right. And, this is what you guys method. do. Someone else has to do that. Exactly. But a couple, a couple of great things that are happening are. As there's more awareness in the space, um, there's more funding being put into security auditing and more attention being drawn to it. I'm hoping that that will basically improve the landscape as a whole and um, we can take lessons from what else is going on out in the space and incorporate that into our processes too. Sure. Um, but I think by focusing, um, our focus really I think has led to our success in that, you know, We'd had lots of folks early on say, "Hey, why? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that?" And while you know, we're, we'll gladly take any feedback and advice. Um, I think just being really hyper focused on facilitating, executing on these audits, improving the software pos or the security posture rather of these projects, um, we've been able to be pretty successful. Excellent. I want to. Uh pivot a little bit and ask you, I mean, look, you started this seven years ago. There wasn't an open SSF then. Over the last, I, I, I guess it's been about two years now, a year and a half we open SSF, you know, from the Linux Foundation. How has the, the advent of the open SSF kind of helped, hurt, boosted, you know, what, what effect has it had mm -hmm. on your organization? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say overall it's helped because... As you know, open source is largely relatively decentralized and um, having a strong consortium of organizations, foundations, individuals who are focused on solving this problem, kind of giving them a platform or a forum to, to talk about this stuff um, 
has been really helpful. And I think another way OpenSSF has helped is by going out and actually doing some of the fundraising, um, getting more money into security um, and, and more awareness, you know, from both generally and in government as well um, with the uh, with the executive order responses sure. and those and, and those efforts. I mean, it, it certainly brought a, a big spotlight yeah. to the whole area. And, you know, we're a lot stronger together than we are individually. So, you know, I, I think that obvious. Yes. Um, but, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of a chicken and an egg question here, which is, you know, if not for the solar winds and some of these really high profile supply, software supply chain issues, would OpenSSF and the whole open source software, uh, you know, market gotten the attention that it has, be mm -hmm. unfortunately, because of these things. Right. I mean, you obviously believe this was a problem seven years ago, right? And you went out and did this. So this is not a new problem since whenever Solo wins was December of, or January, oh, it was December. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, of 2021 or something, right? Or 20, or one of them. I don't even remember. <laughs> but um, 20. So this has been an ongoing problem. So certainly, right, you know, sometimes, sometimes things just come together, right? It's like fate. And it, and it just, boom, it blows up. Uh, you know, in, in many ways, you're, the, you're one of the benefactors because you were here, you know, kind of shouting in the wilderness, right? Yes. About this issue before it was, you know, with the cool kids. Yes. Um, where do you see it going in the future? Yeah. So I do think it's, it's human nature to, to react, right? To be reactive. And I think largely... Um, what has been driving the, the, the progress made in the space has been reactive. And one thing that we're trying to do with our, with our audits and with, the, um, with getting the word out about the work that we're doing is to try and shift to be more proactive because we can you know, wait for the problems to happen or we can proactively go out there and fix the problems. And so I, I hope, I think and I hope that the focus shifts more towards proactive security as opposed to reactive security. And because the benefits of proactive security are, you don't see it as much. You know, when you prevent a problem from happening in the future that never happened, it's hard to, to attribute that to, to the, that pro, the action you I took. I get it. Um, but when something happens, like you scrape your knee or something, you, you have something very real that happens, you can react to it, you know, much stronger. So in general, I'd like the shift to focus more towards proactive security, which definitely seems to be where the OpenSSF and, and the organizations that are a part of OpenSSF seem to be going. And it's something that I would love to really help um, take the organization, um, take OpenSSF to the forefront of that and um, really be one of the premier organizations in the world that is actually going out and proactively fixing problems. Yeah, yeah look, I, I think with the open SSF behind you, with it, you have every expectation of being able to do that, right? There's no, in fact, you should do that. Um, but you know what, it, it's great. And, it, and it's, look, on a personal level, I'm great, grateful to hear about people like you doing this before you know, as I said, before the cool kids got involved, because we needed this. This isn't a problem since solar winds. Yeah, and, and I think the beauty is, is especially now that it's more action is being called for, we have been doing this for seven years now, so we had a lot of lessons learned, Yep. a lot of... A lot of know, idiot taxes paid. And, yes, and you, you exactly, and, and we've at this it. point, we've gotten to a pretty good um, level where we, we are confident that we can do this. Um, but as always, you know, open source in general is largely underfunded and us as an organization, you know, we need funding as well, you know, to continue doing this, yeah. to scale up. Oh, it's money. Yeah, exactly. Um, so to scale up even and to, to do more work that I know we're capable of doing. Um, so hopefully, again, as more funding goes into the space as a whole, um, more funding goes into OpenSSF and other foundations um, doing this work. And us supporting those goals, um, I'm hoping more funding will 
come our way as well. I hope so too. Hey, man, thank you so much. My I'm pleasure. Here. Good, keep up the great work. Doing We're going to take a break here for lunch in Austin. I think we'll be back in about an hour. Great. Um, stay tuned. We're, we are live here at Open Source Summit. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, man. That was great. Thanks. Easy peasy. Yeah.